great to see you, Amanda. Great to see you too. I'm so glad you can be here today and that other folks can hear more about your story. I always find it fascinating how um, people came to be in a particular community of faith, what mm -hmm. drew them and what kind of sealed the deal and made them feel like, yeah, this is, this is a spiritual home for me. Would you share with us about your sure. journey and arriving here and choosing to make your home here? Yeah, so we moved to Burlingame last summer and the summer kind of brought a time of contemplation for me and I was wondering if there was a place for me within a church after a long time away and I began listening to this podcast called Two Feminists Annotate the Bible while I read the Bible. It's still an ongoing project. It's a lot to get through. Yes, it's a long um, book. <laughs> and so I found the Episcopal Church and when we were moving to Burlingame, I wrote down a list of all the local Episcopal churches with the intention of going and trying them out. And I came to St. Paul's once, and I've just been coming back ever since. It sort of has that charm and that warmth. I, I, that's been my experience, too. I'm also new here. Uh, For sure. Finding my way, but I'm so glad you heard that. And was there a particular moment that you, you felt yourself sort of relax and know, yeah, this, this feels like home? Yeah, I would say it was a few things. So um, last summer we had our interim pastor and she I noticed we were following along in the Book of Common Prayer and the patriarchs were listed, but Jen included the matriarchs as well. And that really stuck out to me as something like, here's this woman leading the church and mentioning women in the Bible who have always been there. Um, so it was that, and then uh, I think it was a couple weeks after Jocelyn was preaching, and she shared a, um, a piece of art by this artist Yolanda Lopez on the Virgin of Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. And those two experiences really made me feel like I was in the right place, mm -hmm. along with the really welcoming community, um, noticing that everyone was so accepting of these beliefs and it was just a really affirming, inclusive place to be was what really sealed the deal for me. Mm. It's very powerful. I think what you have shared echoes some of my own journey in finding a place and a home and, and seeing women priests, even before I had any awareness of God's call in my life, was this really um, powerful container that said, you know, we value all of the gifts that God has entrusted to human beings, and we're willing to make space for those gifts to flourish. I think that that excites me a lot about our tradition, but you know, we've still got some ways to go. Um, what excites you most when you think about what God is doing and in the world and, and here at St. Paul's and how we sort of step forward in faith as we walk together in this love of God? I would say what excites me most is kind of seeing what's next on my personal journey with God and with my faith and also what we can achieve as a community. So getting involved in the church and their outreach is really exciting to me and reaching out to fellow parishioners and just kind of connecting with the community at large through St. Paul's. Well, I know we'll continue to have opportunities to do that, to get to know each other better, especially in these gatherings that we're having in people's homes this fall. And I'm so grateful to you for coming and sharing a bit of your story and, and letting others know more about your journey. I think that is one of the, the powerful things that we get to do in community is be inspired and, and stirred by one another's experiences of the divine. Um, and our picture of God is, is deeply enlarged by those glimpses that we catch through one another's story. So thank you for sharing about yours this morning and thank you all for being here. Thank you.